Hey, I'm Tamsin, this is Carly, and we travel around Australia in Calypso, our motorhome. Together, we make destination sacred grounds. So, you want to travel with a furry companion. In this vlog, I show you how I got my furry companion, Carly, used to on the road living and the things that we need to do every single day to ensure that she's happy and healthy. So if that's your vibe, stick around for some tips and tricks on how it might support you in your journey. But let's go back to the start, just over a year ago, when we started our journey. first part is the most important and that is introducing your fur baby, your fur friend to your motorhome, your van or whatever it might be. It needs to be a slow process. For Carly, what I did was I parked the van outside of our house for a few days just so she could visually see the van. It was a quite a large size and she wasn't used to it. So that was the first part. The second part was putting a whole heap of stuff in the van that was familiar to her. It had my scent on them, it had her scent on them, there were play toys, so that once she got into the van, she was comfortable. The next was introducing her slowly into the van, and she was really curious, so it worked really well. I was able to leave her in here for short periods of time and just let her explore. The thing was, in this motorhome, there's lots of little hidey holes, which she absolutely loves, and cats, most cats will love that. So that was the next step. The next one after that was just starting the van. It's loud. She wasn't used to it. She got scared. So it was starting, giving it some space, then starting again, giving it some space. And over the next you know, week or two or whatever, whatever it was back then, I can't remember now, it was just a slow process. I would start the van up, go forwards, reverse, come back. Then it might have been a drive down the street, then it might have been a longer drive. So it was really just about taking things slowly. And I think I used that pheromone cap, pheromone spray as well, which helped um, in that regards. So if I can tell you anything and you take anything from this vlog, it is take it really slow and tune in to your fur friend because you're gonna know what's happening if they're uh, acting in a fear response or if they're curious or if they're happy. The more you know your cat or your fur friend, the more information you'll be able to receive from just being in that scenario. Oh, there you are. Having spaces they can explore within the van is important, but also outside the van too. I love you. One of the biggest oh. tips I had when watching a vlog before I started out on the road was to park up near shrubs and trees, places where there is wildlife and other little critters for Carly to watch. If we're in an open field with only grass surrounding us, it gets a little boring for Carly. Now Carly being the curious cat she is, she loves to not only see what the wildlife are doing, but also our neighbours if we have any. You have the opportunity to explore vast lands whilst living on the road, and I'm sure your cat or furry friend would love this too. Take them out, let them sniff around if it's safe, but be mindful that your cat isn't harming the wildlife. If you want to explore without them, there are many pet sitters and agencies out there willing to help for a fee. I will raise it again. Leaving your furry friend unattended in the wrong conditions can be deadly. But if you do, and try to do so in the right conditions, it's crucial you take into consideration the size of your van, 
the time spent away from your cat, the temperature, their age, and even their health. Food and water. Is my baby girl hungry? You want to come inside now? You're hungry? Or you want to venture out a little bit longer? You want to venture out for a little bit longer? It's pretty easy with Kylie. I just ensure I've got a good space to store food and water when I'm driving around. Ensure your cat or furry friend doesn't eat too much before and after travel times as they may get an upset tummy. Also, if your cat ventures out into the wild, it's best to watch them at all times so you know what they're eating. There are many places, especially in the outback, where there are baits lying around as well as poisonous plants and grasses. But she's waiting for me to cook dinner. When I cook my dinner, that means her dinner's probably going to be ready. Almost done. <laughs> play and exercise. Carly wants to go for a walk into the wild. In our home before this one, Carly was mostly an indoor cat, apart from spending time in her little outdoor enclosure. She loved to get outside though and feel the fresh air on her skin and watch the birds at a close distance. Living in a van makes it even more important to get outside, stretch, dig around in the earth and connect to nature's elements. When we first moved into Calypso, I made an outdoor enclosure for her. She liked it, but I really wanted her to experience a little more freedom to move around. So I trained her to walk on a harness. You can check the vlog I did here, which will give you loads more information. She rarely uses the enclosure now, much preferring to walk on the harness. When Carly is on the harness or in the enclosure, she is always, always within my sight. I've heard too many horror stories about cats going missing in a storm, never to be seen again. Carly is microchipped. However, I'm normally out free camping in the bush, so I don't think this little princess kitty would last very long at all. If you choose to have your cat or your furry friend off leash or are afraid they will escape from their harness, there are tracking devices you can purchase to put on collars. Always make sure the area is safe before letting your cat out. No sharp objects, aggressive furry animals, and watch them closely to see if they're fearful or perhaps they've seen something dangerous that you've not yet picked up on. Indoor play and exercise. Playtime is seriously important, especially in a smaller van or when the weather isn't suitable and outdoors isn't an option. I know when Kylie needs to exercise or have indoor playtime, as she starts running up and down the van like she's getting ready to race Speedy Gonzales. In these times, I get out her play toys and she goes for gold. We usually have playtime every couple of days, however, it really should be a daily thing to ensure she's mentally and physically engaged. The temperature. Carly and I here in Australia have hit low temperatures of minus five and the high temperatures well into the 40s. Carly's first hot water bottle. Both can be a challenge for your cat and conditions need to be monitored during these times. For extreme cold weather, I have a diesel heater. However, most times in the colder weather, I make sure she has got plenty of blankets and a hot water bottle if it's really cold. I recently added in an electric blanket to the mix, mainly when we get into the minuses. The electric blanket's on. Carly's just completely in her element. Nice and relaxed. Are you nice and cosy there? Yeah. In high and extreme heat conditions, I use the aircon with the generator. This has honestly been a lifesaver. Other ways I've reduced the heat are with window coverings to bring the temperature down and Sirocco fans. I've also put Carly outdoors in a shady area with wet towels over her enclosure. 
the vent on her and in desperate times I've pat her down with cold water. Obviously being a cat she definitely isn't down for that. It's really important to make sure you park up under a tree or somewhere cool in these conditions as they can be deadly for our furry friends. There are many methods to monitor the temperature whilst you're out of the van if you have Wi-Fi. However, personally, I never leave Carly unattended in the heat. And of course, companionship. What's got Carly so curious? Zeus. Who's that, Zeus? Where is he? Who's that? It's Carly. Yes. Your Where cat may Carly? be a friendly critter who loves to meet other animals and get their play on. Or maybe they're more like Carly, who's the quiet observer. Either way, it's great for them to have this mental stimulation with other animals, whether that be watching or interacting. I know that Carly really enjoys watching all the other animals she's come across on our journey. It's really been quite an amazing experience. When driving, ensure you have a safe enclosure or harness that's secure and they feel Thank safe in. Carly still Thank fears driving due to the noise and movements, and it's the only downfall we still have living full time on the road. Come on. What made this worse was when we first started out, there were numerous items that weren't locked down properly. They'd fallen when we'd started driving, making a loud banging sounds when we drove off. On a deeper level, what makes your cat feel safe? I use words, singing, eye contact, physical body gestures, and a calm and firm energy depending on what she needs at the time. Your energy is really important to create a safe space for others. And if you're feeling out of whack, sure thing your furry friend or cat will also be picking up on your vibration. Toilet. Many people ask me, where do you put the kitty litter? All van layouts will be different, so you really need to work out where it will be the best for you, out of the way, but easily accessible for your cat. Perhaps somewhere with good ventilation and lighting so they can see what they're doing. I put Carly's in the shower of the bathroom and use bicarb and essential oils to mask any odor. Grooming. Carly is a short haired cat, which makes it pretty easy for me she grooms herself and whilst I get hair lying around here and there, it's not a big deal. The big deal I do have is that she doesn't always use her scratching posts and she has scratched up some of the furniture. I've placed tape and coverings on the furniture and this has helped. 
nurture. Many cats have loads of love to give. Carly, not as much as others, but we most certainly get our doses of love and nurture in, that's for sure. We created a routine which I think we're both pretty happy with. Either she or I will head to bed at night and await the other. And when we're settled in, I will give her super generous amounts of pats and sometimes even read her a bedtime story. She absolutely loves it. At times we fall asleep holding hands and when I'm deep in my sleep, she gets up and goes back downstairs to watch out the windows before returning again in the morning when it's snuggle time. Look, I wasn't always a cat person. I was actually a dog person and I was especially one not to think I would be a pamper kitty lady. But I've come to realize what great companions they are when traveling on the road. Healthcare. Carly gets her yearly vaccinations to protect against cat flu and is wormed and fleed regularly. It's always good to know how far away you are from the closest vet, especially when traveling to more rural areas. Carly had her vaccination this year and it made her severely ill. I had to take her back to the vet the next day to receive more treatment. However, if I had already gone on my way to my next destination, I could have been many hours in between vets. If you've gotten something out of this vlog, give it a like, give it a share, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to take it a step further, you can support me on my Ko-fi page. All proceeds go to supporting me continue these vlogs. You can also support me on Patreon now as well. So the links are down below. Until next time, I hope you and your fur baby stay safe and stay present. excited to see what she does. A little bit awkward right now <laughs> carrying her but that's what we're walking to. Hi Carly, we're going for a walk to the beach. Okay so the waves are a bit noisy and I think she's a bit scared so we're not gonna do it. Oh what's going on over there? Okay let's go back to the grey.